are continuing our conversation with County Commissioner Bruno Barrero, who is running for Congress, hoping to replace Ileana Ross Layton in the 27th Congressional District. We were talking in that last block about immigration, about Donald Trump's policies. I, I want to take a step back for a second and just ask, you voted for Donald Trump, correct? Yes, I did. What, do you believe that Donald Trump has done well in his first year? Let me tell you, first and foremost, I was a Jeb supporter. I consider myself a Jeb supporter. Um, unfortunately, uh, he did not become the party nominee. And, and since then, I, I supported the candidate of, of the party, of our party. Um, I think uh, he has uh, certain good policies, like uh, on economic development, on cutting the, you know, deregulation in some areas. Um, other things, I do not agree with him at all. What's, a, what's your biggest disagreement with him? Obviously, immigration. Okay, um, we were. I want, I want to sort of get your because as a county commissioner, you often don't have to weigh in on certain issues. So I don't necessarily know where your views are on certain things right. that may come up. Abortion, for instance, where do you stand on on a woman's right to choose? Are I'm you pro, pro? I'm pro life. You're pro life. I'm pro life. So uh, tell me where you would take that as a member of Congress when you think of yourself as being pro life. Where well, does, what does been, that mean to you? That's been decided already by the courts. Uh, but uh, with, with Roe versus Wade, but uh, but the issue is I am in pro-life. Uh, I'm a Catholic, and um, okay. Um, it, it, there's one issue from your time on the county commission that may come up in the campaign that I wanted to ask you about. When you were county commission chairman, you helped lead the fight to to bring the Marlin Stadium into reality. Yes. In hindsight, do you regret that? It was the toughest vote I ever took. Uh, to tell you the truth, in my 26 years of uh, being in office, um, I think, uh, um, unfortunately, we've had not had the, the right ownership. Um, so I hope that people judge me on, on my entire uh, career, not just on one vote. For instance, I passed the Golden Passport. I, I helped, uh, I sponsored the Human Rights Ordinance. Uh, I, I did uh, the, the double homestead exemption. Uh, as a legislator back in, uh, in, in 95, 96, and then later on, I implemented it as a county commissioner. So I hope that people look at me in the entire so, past of my But I just want to be, I, I, I won't belabor this point, but it sounds as if you you almost regret what ha what occurred with the Marlin Stadium, and, and do you not think it was a good fiscal deal at the end of the day for county taxpayers? On the tax, that the taxes that, that helped build the stadium are bed taxes. They can only be used for sports facilities, convention center. They cannot be used to lower it, to lower our hmm. property taxes to to pave our sidewalk, or to pave our streets, and, and do our sidewalks. That unfortunately, those but do you dollars, think it was a good deal? The the issue of of the deal, we, there's not even, and it's difficult to, it's very difficult to quantify, but there's not enough dollars in the county coffers to pay for the advertisement that Miami-Dade gets every time a professional sports like uh, a baseball game is is televised around the country. Now You're it's very difficult to quantify that, and it's a very and, and, I, and as I said again, unfortunately we've not had uh, the right ownership. And and we've and it was the toughest vote I ever took. Let me let me. You, you mentioned the human rights ordinance. You support. Uh, where, what is your position as it relates to lesbian, gay, transgender, LGBT, bisexual? I am I am a full supporter. I've over the years uh, I've proven that in, in in sponsoring many pieces of legislation at the county level. So, for instance, it came ever came before Congress the issue of whether transgender members should be able to serve in the military. You of would course, support. I, of course, I support okay. that. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is, well, with Donna Shalala, I want to just get your reaction. You know, Donna Shalala is, 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 is probably going to announce in the next couple of weeks whether or not she's going to jump into this race. What do you think about the idea of running against Donna Shalala? Uh, extremely intriguing, uh, but I, 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 I support it. I, you know, we're fortunate to live in a democracy, uh, multi-party um, uh, country. Uh, I hope that uh, everyone has the, their, their right to, well, I, I know everyone, everyone hopes everyone runs, everybody that wishes to run, runs, and and I welcome uh, any challenge. This is a tough seat for a Republican. Ileana Ross Layton, I think because of her stature, her legacy, her time, has been able to hold on to this seat, but this is a seat, this is a district that went almost 20 points in favor of Hillary Clinton. We cannot. Yeah, be, I mean we, that's, we, we, yeah, that's yes, true. Yeah, but we cannot judge this district just on one election. 
on the Hillary Trump election. If you look underneath, uh, Ileana, like you said, has held it for many years as a Republican. Underneath that, county commissioners uh, in large part are, are Republican. Well, if but they look, don't run you, as an it, R or a D. But, but they, ex they express their views and their points of views. If you look at the state representatives and the state senators, which do run under R or Ds, I would tell you it's a 50-50 seat. This is a purple seat. All my life, since 92, I have represented what are considered uh, purple seats. Actually, you could say the 92 and 94 election were, were well, blue one, one seats. Point, one point I want to get to is you've been in the race now for over nine months, uh, or at least nine months of reporting period for, for campaign finance yes. purposes. You have not raised a lot of money. It does not seem as if Republicans are interested in donating a lot of money. I think, well, I checked your I, FEC I, records and you've only raised about $260,000 in that I period. Am, I'm extremely glad you touched that point. My money has been that has been reported to now has been primarily primary money which means that only I can only raise per person twenty seven hundred dollars right. um, the uh, the Democrat side they've been raising fifty four hundred per person because they've been raising primary money and general money right, but, so so if you look at someone that raised in a Democratic but, ticket five hundred thousand dollars compared to my two hundred and fifty but one thing I want to raise my uh, money is primary I, I, and theirs is primary and general but one of the things I looking through guarantee in looking through your campaign reports one thing that I did notice was that was that almost all of your funding comes from lobbyists developers and folks who do business with the county you remain on the county commission, win or lose, you you know, if you lose, you stay on the county commission. Is there a problem no, with, with a, I mean, there's a lot of lobbyists, a lot of developers, a lot of attorneys. Right now they're passing a piece of legislation in Tallahassee that says that we will have to resign to run. And I am willing, and I'm always to turning in, I will turn in my, my letter to, to. So you're willing to resign? Yes. All right. Bruno Barrero making a little news, saving it for the very last second. <laughs> All right. Bruno, thank you very much for your thank time. You. We'll have you back, I'm sure. We'll be right back after the break.